Hey there, my lovelies. It is so good to be here with you on Facebook and let me get my Insta girls going as well. I'm Donna Hoffman. Oh, yay. It's so good to see you. It's so good to be back. We were off last week. Hi there, Insta lovelies. I'm Donna Hoffman. They call me the interior design advocate and that is because every Tuesday I come out here, we put a pin in it, whatever we're doing in our design studio, and we come out here and I teach a lesson to you, my design divas, my gorgeous design lovers across the United States and beyond. Uh, it's an honor to have been called one of the nation's leading interior design coaches. And I inspire not only design lovers working on your own home, but also design lovers who are practicing professionals. Uh, my courses online are actually were originally conceived and created for design lovers working on their own home, but professionals started buying them, newbie designers and stagers, and uh, people love them. And I love people who love design, so it's great to be here with you. So every week, Tuesday, 4 p.m., I love to come out here, teach a lesson on design, and take your questions. However, we are in this COVID moment, so I just want to make sure that you are okay. I know that a lot of you who follow me, if you're sensitive to design, you are generally a sensitive person, sensitive to your surroundings. You might be an HSP, you might be an empath, you might be saying, what? Donna Hoffman, what are you talking about? Don't worry about it. I love you too. But I just want to make sure that you're okay, that you're feeling okay in the current moment that we are all in. Um, I know that uh, different parts of the country are feeling COVID in different ways. Where we are in the Philadelphia and New York region, we're feeling it. That's why, too bad this doesn't have vodka in it also. It's just tonic. It's not five o'clock yet, right? I'm such a show off, really. I'm actually a teetotaler, right? But my vodka fume, which is my cap full of vodka, I don't do that till after five normally. But anyway, it's always an exception to every rule. Anyway, lovelies, let's talk wallpaper. As long as I know you're okay. Let's talk about wallpaper. We're talking about what are some unique ways to work with wallpaper. And I have some samples to show you. I want to show you some exciting things that are happening in the uh, in the wallpaper world. So what should I do first? You want to see exciting things or should we talk about what you can do with them? Tell you what, let's talk about what you could do with them. Then we'll look at some samples and talk about how you might be able to use those samples. How about that? How about them, uh, them apples? Okay, so everybody's telling me that you're okay. You'd like to talk design. All righty. Everybody's saying thanks, doing great. All right, good. Girls, I love it. And I love being here with you. So let's talk wallpaper. Wallpaper is so back, it's beyond back. And there are creative ways to use it if you don't want to go all in doing a full room in it. Of course, that's the pinnacle. So I want you to think of wallpaper, um, I want you to think of it as jewelry for your room. You know, I've got my course, Design CPR, Creating Perfect Rooms with Accessories, where we talk about the fact that, that accessories are the dressing of the room. Wall art and tabletop and, um, and, and soft goods. But, you know, you can use, you can create wallpaper, make wallpaper almost another, like another accessory in a room. So let's talk about ways you can use it that are maybe a little unique, and then we'll go into some applications. So something fun that you can absolutely do with wallpaper is you can go to a secondhand bookstore and purchase books that are all relatively the same size, and then cover them in a simple grass cloth. Remember when you were a kid? Well, I might be dating myself. When you had to cover your books, but they didn't sell the covers, so you would, you had, you, we would cut up paper bags. At least my mom would, and she'd cover the book with the paper bag. All the other kids had good-looking uh, book covers, except for me. But anyway, I love my mom to bits. Um, so you can do your own book covers, but do it out of wallpaper. But do a simple grass cloth, you know, something simple like neutral that works with your interior. This has a clip on it, so I remember to put it back on the right project board that I just took it off of. Um, and then you can use those books as you style out a bookcase. So that's a great way to do something interesting with wallpaper. And of course, I just showed you a very neutral color. You could do a color color or a pale blue or a soft green, whatever works for your interior. So do some book covers and then put those into your bookcase. How fabulous looking would that be? Answer, fabulous. Something else you can always do, if you've ever uh, heard me talk about this, about wallpaper in fun ways, you can always wallpaper the inside back of a bookcase. We're doing that right now in a gentleman's office, and we're doing this really interesting, slubby, charcoal gray grass cloth, but it's really, really slubby, and it's 
I just, it's not charcoal gray. It's almost like a graphite gray, deep, deep. It's an off black. So good looking. And we're painting the, the bookcase an interesting color for him as well. So book, frame books with, cover books with them, do the inside back of a bookcase. Then you can also go to a local framer and have wallpaper mounted on uh, canvas and don't, you, you don't have to frame it. You, you don't have to put glass in front of it, but you are going to frame it. You can do a grid of six, three top, three bottom. You can do a grid of nine, three, three, and three. You can do larger swatches and you can do um, a triptych. So that's something you can do. Something else you can do, which we're doing in a boho project in Philadelphia right now, if the city ever opens and we can install it, it would be good. But um, anyway, we're doing these tall, they're like 82 inches high by about 39 to 40 wide, these big panels. This is a young professional. They're gonna be really great looking at her dining room, but this way when she moves one day, this wallpaper almost becomes like art. It's a beautiful floral wallpaper with a lot of movement to it. Really, really cool. Um, so three large, un, it's, it's framed, but it is not, there's no glass in front of it, okay? Then something else you can do, have you ever seen room divider screens? They can be a three panel screen or a five panel screen. You can take a great muraled wallpaper and mount that to a screen Oh, so good looking. Now, how do you do that? Well, I'm not crafty, so you have to hire the guy or the girl to do it for you because I can't tell you how to do it. I'd hire somebody. I'd hire a workroom. I would probably have one of my furniture workrooms build the, the, the framing thing with hinges, and then I would probably hire my wallpaper installer to uh, install it. That could be great looking. And then you have that behind your baby grand piano or, I don't know, behind a sofa or in some area of your living room or you figure it out. But cool way to use wallpaper in an unusual way. I'm getting a lot of hearts on that one. Um, something else really cool to do with wallpaper that doesn't have to cost a million bucks, doesn't have to do, you don't have to do a whole room, do your ceiling. Do your ceiling, just your ceiling in a great wallpaper. Yeah, you can do a grass cloth, but you can also do something with a pattern. You can do something with a texture. I'm going to show you some cool stuff in just a second. Ceiling can be end to end, front to back, but you can also trim out the center of your ceiling. Let's say you're doing something I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a herringbone, um, a houndstooth rather, in a black and white. You can do you know, a black painted trim. 18 inches in from your wall all the way around your ceiling and then you know paper the, the center ah fabulous um so not as expensive as doing the entire room then notice we went from books to bigger and bigger usages well now of course there's the accent wall just the wall behind your bed just the wall in the playroom uh, where you want to just do a really cool splash of something. Just the, just a, an accent wall in a powder room. Um, so many cool accent walls that you can do just with wallpaper, floor to ceiling, end to end. Or you can, again, trim it out. Behind a bed, you can trim out a huge shadow box. You can paint the millwork for that shadow box the same color as the rest of your millwork. Or again, it can be a color that you pull out of the wallpaper. Maybe it's a pink and cream um, floral, and then maybe you want to do a deeper pink paint on your millwork surround. Why the heck not? And then, of course, do your whole room in it. So those are just from the unique to the standard bunch of ways for you to use wallpaper. So let's talk about what's happening in wallpaper. So many cool things happening. These, the papers I'm going to show you happen to be from Philip Jeffries and um, the, ha the Holland. I don't have a relationship with these companies. I just like the product. And honestly, I came running up here from the design studio to talk to you. And I thought, quick, what can I get my hands on fast? So these happen to be the samples I pulled. So look at this cool stuff from Philip Jeffries. This is this looks almost like crushed rocks. So cool. And then there's, um, I should put my glasses on so I can tell you what this is. This is a washable paper and this, it looks like, um, it looks like snakeskin. How cool is that? So cool. Really cool. Oh, look at this. This looks like ostrich. It's not. Nobody died for this paper. How cool is that? And this comes in different colors. I'm going to show it to you. I don't know if you can quite see that there. I'm going to show that to you in some different colors. Here's another just great 
grass cloth that also has some foiling work in it. I mean, come on. How cool is this? All right, told you about the hound's tooth. So here it is. It's a vinyl hound's tooth. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, there's my ring light. Sorry. Yep, girl has to be lit to come out here and talk to you. And this comes in a gajillion colors. So how fun is that in the different colors? Kind of cool, huh? Love that. Love, love, love. And the ostrich, I told you it came in different colors. Look at it in that in that blue-gray. OMG. How cool is that? Oh, yes. Yes, mama. Oh, look at this. This is called scorched. And it looks like uh, wood, like driftwoody kind of stuff. How cool is that? I mean, come on. Yes. Loving that. Love, love that. Love. Oh, and here's, um. this is interesting. This looks like, this is wood. It looks like wood. But it's, it's, it's it, the paper is in sort of a um, herringbone, a chevron kind of lay-in. So, but it comes in all of these different colors. I mean, kind of, kind of great. And then, of course, there's grass cloth, which has seven bajillion different iterations. It can be slubby. It can be smooth. It can be vinyl. Uh, we've talked about grass cloth before. If it's a natural grass cloth, you will see seams. Oh, this has a sticky note on it because it's tagged for another client project, but... Um, take a look at this. It's, it, it looks like tin, like, like a hammer tin ceiling, but look at that. It comes in different colors. Here we go. How good is that? It's so good. Oh, I'm getting the chills. Oh, who needs a vodka tonic when you've got wallpaper? Now look at this from Beth Helen. I don't know if it'll show well on camera because it's very shiny, but look at the texture on that. Can you see that texture? Crazy, right? Can you imagine just framing that? So cool. It's called silver erosion. And I understand this can be done in different, um, can you see the texture and the rays on that? It can be done in different colors. I don't know that you can eliminate the shine. Here's, speaking of shiny, this will probably make my camera very unhappy, but there's something. It comes in different colors, also from by Bahalan, and it's called Waves. But I mean, come on, how about framing that? And you've got some really cool modern art, giant something. Problem with that, just do know, you might get caught up in some minimums that you've got to respect. Now, remember we talked about muraled wallpaper? There are five billion of them that are cool looking. I mean, not five billion, but many. But here's a really neat one, also from Philip Jeffries. Comes in different colorways. These would be beautiful in a dining room. I mean, truly. In fact, we're looking at doing something. I just want to show you the different colors it comes in. So, I mean, those are the different colorways that it could come in. But what I just showed you is, you know, what the full repeat looks like. Are you liking this? Are you enjoying seeing these samples from my, uh, from my, my nether region downstairs in our Studio B where we put all the coolness together? Yeah, so come on. Tell me that there isn't coolness happening in the world of wallpapers. Questions are coming in. So put in your questions. If you'd like to ask a question, please feel free to type that in. While you're putting in your questions, I want to let you know what we're talking about next week. Next week, we are talking about, hold for it, how to accessorize a small living room. Yes, how to accessorize a small living room. Favorite question I ever got from one of my students about accessorizing a living room was, what kind of accessories to use on a coffee table when you have a dog with a big tail that wags? Hold for the answer next week, if I remember to answer that question. I thought that thought was one of the cutest I got. All right, so next week it's how to accessorize a small living room. And P.S. girls, um, follow us um, on uh, on Insta if you're, not, if you're not already, and that would be finding us here. I, I think it just made the camera crazy, so I'll hold it up that way, at decorating.genius, at decorating.genius. If I hold it out that way, maybe it won't make the ring light crazy. I don't know. Anyway, pu put your question in. Hang on. Taking a drink of pretend vodka tonic. All right, so. All right, Dawn Sh um, Sharox is saying, I love Philip Jeffries wallpaper with the studs in a grid pattern. How would I use that? Funny you should ask, because I didn't. I almost pulled that up here to show you, Dawn, but it's attached to a board that we're presenting to a client uh, in a couple of weeks. This, it's a very cool thing. Um, I've used it. Oh, this is another great idea to use um, for wallpaper. We sometimes uh, wallpaper the inside of front hall closets for people, especially, you know, we work in some really big residences with these twin closets. And I remember the builder made fun of me saying, why the hell are you wallpapering the inside of a closet? And I said, Richard, we're giving people an experience. When guests hang up their coat, they have an experience. They open the closet and they go, whoa, look at this 
cool paper. So I've used that stud paper inside of these cool twin closets. I would use it in a dressing room. Um, we're looking at a dining room for a, a, a young family. They want kind of this edgy look. Um, I, I would use it in a dining room. Why not? It is great looking. So that there you go. So Philip Jeffries stud wallpaper. I'm sorry I don't have a sample out here to show you. Okay, JHGRE1 is saying, what does slubby mean? The same as nubby? Yeah, I would say yeah. Slubby and nubby is the same thing. Yeah. Um, do I have an example of something here that's really slubby to show you? Well, for example, this, I would say that this is not slubby. This is very fine looking, you know? And then this, let's see if I have a slubby, well, this is, this is like crazy slubby nubby, right? But, um, let me see if I have, um, now, okay, okay, okay. Eh, this, this is sort of slubby, you know, it's like a little more textured up here. I don't really have a good example of a super slub, sorry, but yeah, slubby and nubby, yeah. So that, I hope I answered you well. I used to speak for a living on TV. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes when I'm babbling my way through one of these Facebook lives. Okay, I'm going to see what Facebook is saying, Insta, because I jumped right into your questions, you gorgeous women out there. All right, so Sandra is saying hello. So is Lo so is Lois out in Central PA. Hi, girls. Um, Alicia saying she's doing great through COVID. I'm so glad, Alicia. Uh, Joe is saying hello from Ventnor. Sandra is happy to be here. I'm getting hellos from Becky in Alabama. Hey, Beck. Uh, Jan is saying, good day, Donna. Good day, Jan. All right, so we're getting a lot of hellos. General hello to everybody. All right, ooh, hello from Texas. All right, this is good. Um, that was Anna Von Simpson in Texas. And Julie is in Greenville, Texas. Hello, Julie. And Annabelle is just telling me hi. All right, I'm getting a lot of hellos. Hello from Columbus. Okay, Jennifer is happy to be hearing about wallpaper. Happy to be telling you, Jennifer. Angie's saying this is her first time here. Angie, girl, been missing the party. Make sure you're here next week, too. Um, Colleen is saying, I'd love to do wallpapers and accent wall in my powder room. Do you recommend doing the wall with the mirror and vanity on it or the opposite wall? Colleen, that's a great question. Depends on how you walk, you know, how your bathroom is laid out. Um, it's great on the vanity you know, wall behind your, your sink. But just remember, it's got to be a paper that likes water. So you may not want to do it there. You may want to do it on the flat wall where you walk in and there's like nothing there and except a piece of artwork work hanging. So be careful around water and wallpaper. Just saying. Um, Candace, and you know what, guys? You know what else you can do in Candace? You can do this as well. Um, uh, I'm going to decline that. Okay, I hope that, oh dear, I hope that, that paused my video. Sorry, somebody was calling me. Um, so something else you can do with a wallpaper accent that we're actually going to be suggesting to this young couple. You can do an accent wall in paper. Like, for example, the that mural I showed you. So you could do the mural on one wall and then grass cloth the rest of the room. Like, you could still do paper everywhere. But the paping or the, the, the stud paper that somebody was asking me about, do the stud paper on one wall and then, you know, go around the room doing other things as well. So, Colleen, that's something else for you to think about, too, uh, that you could do in your bathroom. All right. Anna is loving the, sam love the samples. I'm glad, Anna. I wish I could have you guys here. I've got so much good stuff to show you. It's just hard to bring it all out here onto my, uh, onto my desk. Um... Denise is saying your thoughts about using it in a master bath, using wallpaper. Um, look, I don't think in a very wet environment, I don't, I don't think wallpaper is really the way to go. That's why they're good in powder rooms. I don't like them. I don't like, I don't like a really, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a steamy shower girl. And I even am concerned and check with my builders and stuff if I'm below grade, if I'm a kind of a, a moist um, sublevel basement. So I would just be careful in wet environments. So I, my initial reaction in, in a master bath is do something great with your millwork. Maybe you want to do like a six inch wide board. I didn't say shiplap. I think that that's kind of having its moment um, and still is, but I think it's a trend that will pop and it's very specific to this time period. 
Um, we could we should talk about shiplap one day. But anyway, um, what would I do in a master bath for accent? I would do something cool with millwork. Do do raised paneling and on one wall, and you can paint it an accent color or not. It can just be like big squares, you know, floor to ceiling on one wall. Um, and you can maybe paint it in a high gloss or something. Um, you can also do, it's pricey, but you could do tile floor to ceiling as an accent wall in a master bath. I mean, whew, how great could that be? So I would do that before I would do wallpaper. I'm sorry, Denise, I did not mean to burst your bubble. Um, yeah, because humidity is a concern, Denise is saying. You're right, you're right about that. Um, Anne is excited to be here. I'm glad, Anne. I'm excited to have you. Um, oh, Maureen said, wallpapering the inside of a hutch. Yes, I didn't name that one. That's a great thing to do. Um, if you have a hutch you're trying to update, paint, baby. Paint that sucker and then wallpaper the inside of it. Totally reinvent it. If you've got kind of that Queen Anne, um, you know, hutch from your dining room set that was, you know, from the 80s or 90s or early 2000s and you want to do something great with it, put a fantastic color on it or just uh, like a high gloss black and do do a you know even uh, imagine a, a high gloss black with this as your background that could be great you know as your back color or a beautiful color a beautiful you know surreal you know deep bright navy could be great um joe is saying i want to use shiplap in the hall bath i'm sorry joe at a beach house what kind of wallpaper design would you suggest or not suggest i wouldn't oh, in a hall bath um, I don't know how to tell you about wall, what wallpaper to do, Joe, because I don't know what's going on in your home, and I, I, you really need a designer to talk to you. Or, Joe, if you're in one of my private groups, you can post pictures, and the community and my team can weigh in. But um, I don't, I, I don't think I can answer you well here without seeing what you're going, what you're talking about. And I know I just knocked shiplap. Shiplap is great looking. I just think it's everywhere, and I think it's going to run its course. And here, I would do shiplap on a barn door. Do that. I would do it in a kid's space. I, I, I like getting trendy in kid's spaces because it's a kid's space. I don't like getting trendy in adult spaces that you want to have 10, 12, 15 year staying power out of. And I think shiplap is going to have its, I don't, I wouldn't invest money in shiplap right now. Not, not from what I'm seeing coming down the pike, but that's me. Um, Debbie is saying, if I wallpaper one wall in dining room, should, should the paint color from the wallpaper, if I wallpaper one wall in the dining room, should should I paint a color from the wallpaper as long as it works with the rest of the house? If I'm understanding you, oh, for heaven's sakes, everybody's calling me now. Sorry, that paused my video. Sorry, video got paused. Another phone call coming in. I become very popular when I'm out here talking to you girls. Um, Debbie, here's what I would do if I'm understanding your question. So let's say you have a, let's say Debbie is doing, okay, where's that? Where is that cool? mural. Let's say Debbie's doing the mural paper, right? And she's doing it in, in uh, I don't know, she's doing it in this pink colorway, right? There you go. So Debbie could paint the rest of her wall, rest of her walls in this background color or in this pink. She could absolutely pull a color out of her paper for sure. Do you have to? No. Let's say this was your mural. You know, you could pick some other creamy paint color that works with this, it maybe is 10 degrees or 15 degrees or 20 degrees lighter than that. So it should be in conversation, but it doesn't have to come out of the paper, but it could come out of the paper. Why not? Um, so I think that's a good thing. So Jennifer is saying she loves the texture of wallpapers. Which company, uh, Suparna, wants to know which company has wallpaper suitable for kids' rooms? I think um, it's not the company, it's the product. I think you want a vinyl washable paper. And then I would find something in your price range. I think York wallpaper probably has some things that might be in a better price point. Um, but, I, but I think it's really more the product, Saparna. You don't want silk. You don't want grass cloth. You don't want any natural sort of product. You don't want a fussy, finicky paper. You want, I would, even commercial grade, really good. But something that says washable, so it's good for, for a kid's room, you know, heavy-duty kind of use. Um, but I love that. I love where you're going at, for that as an idea. Um, okay, Margaret is saying, I have Thibaut Daintree gray wallpaper in a powder room. Any tips on adding art to a busy print? Um... Yeah, I would keep the art simple. Um, 
it's in a powder room. I was going to say a mirror would be beautiful on top of a mural paper, a really busy paper. Um, I would keep the paper, I would keep the art kind of simple. In fact, if you want to get really snazzy jazzy with it, why don't you find a really cool patterned paper? I'm making this up. I mean, they're, oh, I should have brought it out here. Really cool thing that looked like it had embedded rope. Remember we looked at this type of something, you know, you can get like kind of stylized by doing this ostrich thing. And what if in your powder room you did two 18 by 18 framed in a cool frame, put glass in front of it, stack them north south. So you have this busy paper with kind of this art statement and what looks like mixed media. Have you ever heard that term in art, mixed media? You know, you have uh, oil and you have watercolor and you have charcoal drawing. Then there's something called mixed media, which can be like paper mache slapped onto a canvas or some other plaster work on a canvas. Uh, or, or it can be calligraphy, with, which also has a little bit of paper applied to it. So it's, it's a mixture of mediums. So when you, when you do what I just talked about doing, that's sort of like a mixed media kind of idea. So maybe that's what I would do to keep it simple. I'd want to see what the paper is to be able to better advise you. For example, let's say you have a really cool um, floral vine something, but you find some prints that have like a reduced version of a flower, very simple, very simple background. That could be interesting to pull out of that paper. So I think... I don't think there's a one a one a one note answer for everybody. I'm sorry, Margaret, if I disappointed you with that answer. Um, Nella 02130 on Insta wants to know what are my thoughts on removable wallpaper in a kids' room. Um, I think it's a great idea, but I will tell you, um, I think Tem Paper is out there doing some good removable papers. I'd love to know what what removable papers you like, but um, they're not inexpensive. They're really not that less expensive than uh, paper paper. In fact, for this young professional whose uh, condo we're doing in Center City, Philadelphia, we were going to do a, a removable paper. That's really where the conversation started. She asked about removable paper. And then when we priced it out, we said, look, it's almost identically cost. It, uh, the cost was almost identical to doing an, a, an installed paper. Plus when she moves, we have to pull it out and there's that cost. So that's why we did these giant panels. So maybe in a kid's room, maybe you want to do giant panels. I don't know, but I, I like it. I like the idea, if that's what you're asking. I don't have a problem with, with um, removable paper. Um, I have not heard bad things about it from an application perspective or a last perspective. I did have actually one paper hanger tell me that he doesn't, always, he doesn't think it's always the easiest thing to install, but that's because he's used to working with the brush and the wallpaper paste and so forth. So I hope I answered you well, Nella. If you have a a, a follow-up question, feel free to put that in. Um, Rhonda Pickens is saying, it's her first time also, Rhonda, where have you been? Want to see you here next week too, girly. Uh, happy to have you, Rhonda. Um, Colleen is saying, thank you. Barbara saying, what color rug should I use on up, 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 up off topic, Barbara? So I'm not going to take it because I'm getting wallpaper questions. Um, but, uh, I, okay, so Elaine is saying, oh no, Anna is saying, what finish in a paint would you recommend for the vanity wall? Um, Semi-gloss or 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 a, a gloss, I mean a high gloss, why not? I'm showing something to a client on Wednesday and her wild card is actually a glossy paint. We'll see. We'll see if she goes for that. I'm thinking she's not going to, but we never, you never know. She might even be on this Facebook Live right now or Insta Live. Who knows? Hi, Suda Bay, if you're here. Uh, Roxanne is saying, you have mentioned, but what's a good company to consider for a wallpaper purpose? Uh, you mean what wallpaper companies do I like? Jeepers, I like a bunch. Um, Philip Jeffries, I think, is a, is a really good, reliable company. Um, I like Bahalan as well. I like Tebow's papers. Um, who else is, who other papers? Boy, if Katie was sitting here right now, the part of Katie is being played by Steve Hoffman because we're still on COVID lockdown. Um, Katie would be able to whip off three more. Um, they're on the tip of my tongue. I, I think York does uh, does good stuff as well. Um, I'm sure I'm eliminating, I'm not mentioning some really good paper brands, but those are a few that come to mind quickly. Roxanne. Uh, Darcel said she used wallpaper samples by covering shoe boxes for a teacher's room. And she used the boxes for art supplies. That's a cute idea. That's really cute. In a kid's playroom or something. I love that idea. Really nice. 
Um, thank you for sharing that, uh, Dar uh, Darcy. I'm sorry, I didn't say your name right. Thank you, Darcy. That's a great, great idea. Smart. Design divas are all smart. I love you guys. Um, Joe is saying thank you. Good advice on shiplap. Um, okay, good. Um, Liz said we did vinyl from York. Perfect for the boys. Great. Yeah, I think I think York is is reliable product. And I'll tell you what, I have toured their production line. This is well made paper and. Some of their historical papers that they're recreating. It, oh, we did. I did this great thing. I went to the, a design show in Paris called Maison and Objet, and we were able to go to look at a wallpaper restoration group whose name escapes me because it's French. There it is, and my French is kind of bad. But it was so cool to see how they took a paper pattern from the 19th, the 18th century. And you'd look at it in its original form and go, oh, it's nice back then, but I wouldn't use that now. But then they said, well, look what happened when we recolored it into black and black and cream. Look at what happened when we recolored it into pink and gray. And you go, oh, my gosh, that's great. So the really good companies are taking these historical archival things, recoloring them, doing interesting things to them. Um, and York, believe it or not, does that as well. Um, so I think that's a reliable, a reliable company, reliable, good product. Um, all right, Anne said, thank you. She's planning on semi or gloss. All right, Anne, I want to see pictures. If you're in one of my, my private Facebook groups, you can send me pictures. If you're not, you can't send me pictures because I just don't have the bandwidth to look at everybody's gorgeousness um, there. Um, Willette is saying, do you think wallpaper brings in, brings in walls for small bathrooms? Willette, that has to do with the color. I teach about this in my Decorating Genius um, online course, how color is dynamic. Color can move toward you and take up space. It can move away from you and give away space. Pattern moves toward you, takes up space, shrinks spaces down, in other words. So if you have a small powder room that you don't want to cozy up more, if you don't want to make it look smaller, don't put dark color in it and don't, um, don't put pattern in it. So that's my answer to you there, Willette. Good question, though. Really good question. All your questions are good. Um, Marianne is saying that she's a first timer here. Marianne, yay! So good to have you here. Um, and of course, it's great to have all you repeat offenders here too. I love seeing you girls too. Um, Rissell is saying, which is, which is best to see sample wallpaper when I am my own designer? Where is it best to see sample wallpapers when I'm my own designer? You know, I have seen paint stores that had wallpaper books. I would Google in your area to see if there's a wallpaper store that has books where you can go because let me tell you something, seeing things online, I'm a professional designer, I win awards doing design and I work on big budget projects. I don't say that to toot my own horn, I say that to tell you that even with that those credentials, I don't like picking out things online. I can't see fabric texture online, nobody can. You can't see subtleness and undertone, paint colors, so forth. So you do need to see it in person and I have news for you. As a designer, when I see a little, you know, snippet like this in a in a sample, I then get on the phone with my rep or have my team get on the phone with my rep and say, hey, can we please have a cutting sent out called a memo? This is a memo. This was originally what I saw in this in this, you know, tag. Who can, you know, who wants to work with a postage stamp size thing? You want a piece of it. You want a piece of me? You want a piece of it. So you want to first see if there's a wallpaper group in your area and when you go through their books and you want to say okay can I order a memo M-E-M-O or a sample and they might make you pay for it I don't as a designer because I'm putting a lot of business into these companies um, so they're happy to send designer samples as a, as a home end user I don't know if they will but they might charge you a couple bucks so what I would do is be willing to part with a few dollars up front maybe ten dollars a sample fifteen I don't know, making up these numbers, because it, the sampling is expensive, it is, so they're not trying to be pills by sampling you, and trust me, they're not getting rich off of these samples, but this way you have it, and you can move it around and see how you like it, when it's up high, when it's low, put it in your bathroom that has no natural light, put it in your master bath that's flooded with mat natural light, so you can see how things change. You will. It's worth spending a little bit up front to get the decision right, so, so hopefully I, I answered you there about... Um, how to how to get that um, support, Russell. Um, Willette is saying, thank you for the help. Alice is in California saying, hi. Hi, Alice. I wish I was out there in some sunny California weather right now. 
so enjoy it for me. Brenda is saying, uh, okay, Brenda, Brenda is asking for design advice, and Brenda, I can't answer you, girlfriend, if I don't see a picture of your room and what's going on. Otherwise, I'd give you lousy advice, and I don't ever want to do that. So if you are a student in one of my online courses, Decorating Genius, Seven Simple Steps to Great Rooms, or Design CPR, How to Create Perfect Rooms with Accessories, or Window Boss, How to uh, Plan and Select Windows Like a Boss, each one of my online courses has its own private Facebook group where you can post pictures of your project, you can post questions about your project or if a question comes up in the course or if you want to know about a resource or whatever. Um, and in that group, it's great to be able to see what my students are working on. And I even have a more advanced group where we get together online once a month with my more advanced and motivated students. That's really where I can dig more deeply into a project. But if you have to describe your room to me in one of these Facebook Lives, if I think it's a question I need to see a picture to answer you, to, to be able to answer you well, I am doing you a favor when I say, I need a picture to be able to answer you well. I'm not trying to brush you off. So I'm saying that with love and respect. I need a picture to be able to answer you well, Brenda Rose. Brenda, Brenda Roos, I'm sorry. Um, I'm getting an amen from Susan. I don't even know why, but I'll take it. And then Insta, as, as, A.S. Culbert is saying, is uh, as to, about coordinating a wallpaper. Is stained molding making a comeback? Uh, no, I don't think it is. Versus painted trim, no. I think that stained molding has its place. I think if you are doing Mountain Lodge and you're in Colorado, go for it. I think if you are living in a craftsman style home in Michigan or Chicago, go for it. Or the Northeast, yay. Uh, it's it's a rustic look. It's an interruptive look. It, it delineates spaces. It drops ceilings. It can be dark. But if your design fingerprint, meaning how you tick in design, what you love, if you need these contained spaces that are a little moodier and deeper, I, I think go for it. But I think it's very hard to design around. I think that stained molding and mill, mill work is beautiful in a library um, across a million design styles. So there I think you're fine. But throughout a house, throughout a condo, throughout an apartment, um, I, I would be careful about it. Now, you can absolutely put some color on your on your trim. You, I mean, I just did a project where we painted all the doors uh, a high gloss black, tricorn black. The best black in the world. Thank you, Sherwin-Williams. Or it's one of the best black colors, paint colors in the world. Um, and we did, uh, I could have done the moldings, the, the base moldings as well in the crown. We didn't. We just did the doors, and it's really great looking. So I think it's kind of a case-by-case -case basis, A.S. Culbert. Um, did I answer you well? It's a great question. And when I teach, I really, really try to keep my opinion out of it. That's why my courses work across all design styles, all budgets. I mean, truly, they work across all, but all design styles. But there are certain things that I think are very stylistically um, specific. And I think when you pull it out of that style, it can be a problem. So I think that stained millwork has a place, and I think you need to respect that place. But that's just me. But I've, I've worked with enough clients where I had to undo stained millwork, and, uh, you know, there it is. It's a problem. Okay. So Jennifer is saying, do you have any good resources for landscape mural wallpaper or toile? I would try Schumacher. Or possibly toile. Oh gosh, and who? I just met with the rep. They have beautiful wallpapers. Oh, Sanders. They have papers with fabrics that are the same as the paper, so kind of cool there. Sanders Sun, sorry. You can try them, Jennifer. And, da, 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 da. and I'll tell you what, Philip Jeffries has some really cool mural papers and laser printed mural papers and good stuff. Um, Nella02130 is asking another question. Should you get a professional wallpaper person or DIY? Now, you know I was thrown out of a sewing workshop when I was in grad school, right? Like, I can't sew. I look at that needle going up and down and I want to have a heart attack. I'm convinced it's going to go through my own thumb, but I can design amazing window treatments and I know enough about fabrication to be dangerous so I can talk to a window workroom well. I know enough about wallpaper installation 
to be able to talk to a wallpaper installer. But I watch a good wallpaper installer prepping the wall, knowing if and telling me if indeed we should line a um, do a liner behind a grass cloth because of something about that grass cloth. I would not even begin as a DIYer, and I'm I'm not a DIYer, but I wouldn't begin to overestimate what can be done and done well on the DIY side. You know if you're the Mozart of DIY, you're out there. You are the DIYer. You can put in your own tile and it looks amazing. You can rip apart your own bathroom. It looks fabulous. But if you're not that Mozart person, if you know that this is not your skill set, your Ballywick, pay a professional. You know, pay once. Get it done right. That's what I say. But that's just me. You know, budget is budget. And, and if, if budget won't allow you to get into professional, then, and you think you can DIY it, great. If you think you'd enjoy DIYing it, great also. Those are my answers. But let me tell you something. Wallpaper, to do, do it well, especially some of these papers are very fussy papers, these, especially the grass cloths, that I would be hesitant unless you know you can really tackle it well. All right, let's see. Any other questions coming in? I think I have all the questions. Linda wants to say, what is, oh, Cheryl, I'm sorry. Um, oh, I, I skipped a bunch of questions, sorry. Um, okay, Roxanne saying thank you for the wallpaper recommendations. You're welcome, Roxanne. Marsh, Mar Marcia, Marcia, what's the matter with me? Yes, I read for a living. Um, what is your perfect schematic color with a beige room? There are 700 answers to that. You could, there are a billion great color schemes with beige. So I'd need to know more about you, Marcia. What's your design fingerprint? What's happening in the adjoining rooms? Yes, you, you guessed my last thing. Got to see a picture to be able to answer you well. Um, Cheryl is saying, my powder room has three feet of paper up around the bottom. Is this totally dated? I plan on replacing paper or painting, trying to decide. Um... No, I don't. I think you're okay having paper up to your chair rail. I don't. I don't have a problem with that. If you if you have a chair rail, I think it's good. Um, Linda is saying sorry, I missed your live. Watching now from Connecticut, and I've recovered from the virus. Ah, oh, Linda, you still don't have your taste or smell. I'm interested in chinoiserie wallpaper from from my half bath on the main floor. Linda, first of all, girlfriend, <coughs> I'm sending a big hug to you. I am so sorry you had COVID. You are not the first person in, in this region who I know of who had it whose taste and smell is still not back. My girlfriend's daughter, so far as at week six, still doesn't have her taste and smell back. I don't like that. Um, I am so happy you're well and healthy and here with us. So that's good. And tell me if I, there's anything else I can do to help you, Linda. So glad you're better. So glad. Um, Alicia is saying, could I wallpaper the water closet in my master? Yeah. You could, I guess you could, the, just the water closet. It's not as, um, you know, wet an area as the steamy part of the, of the master if you have a separate water closet. Again there, I would do something though that doesn't like moisture. Uh, hello. I would be careful of doing something that doesn't like moisture, AKA grass cloth. Don't, I wouldn't do a grass cloth unless it's a, a faux, like a vinyl. Um, see if I have so many pieces of paper here. Did I read all of these? Did that one, did that, did that that that's actual wallpaper can't read that all right from insta dawn is saying does dust settle into the hundreds of crevices on a shiplap wall i have not heard that is a problem and you can dust with a feather duster or whatever a, a swiffer duster um i haven't heard that about i have not heard that objection uh there it is so Steve Hoffman is telling me we are really overstaying our welcome here and, and running out of time. So I'm going to do a call. Last two questions. If you got them, put them in or forever hold your peace. Let me, while you're putting in potentially your last questions, I want to let you know that next week, 4 p.m. Eastern, we will be back. And we're talking about accessorizing a small living room. Accessorizing a small living room next week. If you missed any portion of this, it will be on Insta Live for 24 hours. It will be on Facebook as it moves through the feed. Um, but you can also follow up, find us on YouTube. Now, this made everything crazy, but you can find us on YouTube. Uh, I'll do that so it's out of the, I don't know, the, the lighting problem way. YouTube, just find us at, at the Interior Design Advocate. Plus, we post other cool videos. And what else do I want to tell you? And if you're not following us on Instagram, girl, you're missing a lot of fun stuff at... 
yeah, at decorating.genius. That's at decorating.genius. Is that even on camera? There's a 10 second or 15 second bead delay on Facebook. So I have no idea if anything is reading over there. And I'm sorry we missed you last week, but they changed a major something on Facebook Lives. I'm assuming it was for hacking purposes. That's why we couldn't be live with you last week. So last two questions. Let's see. Um, I think I got every... Oh, um, Linda wanted to know about chinoiserie paper for my half bath. Uh, did I answer you, Linda? Chinoiserie paper. I have to think on that. It's, it's not really a hot, hot look out there, chinoiserie, right now. Oh, it's not having the moment it once was. I gotta think. I gotta think. Mm. Uh, cheaper. It's, does anybody know a good place to get a chinoiserie paper for, for Linda Smith? Our healthy prior COVID sufferer. I'd love to know what it is. If it's not something I already mentioned, Linda. Um, chinoiserie paper. Maybe Sanderson would have. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Schumacher, maybe. Yeah. Um, Celeste is saying, does remodel wallpaper come up with no damage in your experience? I don't know what remodel wallpaper is, so I am sorry I cannot answer you. Does it come up with no damage? I know that any wallpaper, if it wasn't installed well, can be tough to pull off the wall. So wall prep will be in your future. Um, so you may want to get a professional in to get it down and then, you know, respackle and and fix things so you can get a nice clean application of the next paper or of your paint. But that's a great question, Celeste. Great question. Um, Alicia's saying, thank you. Uh, Willette is saying that I got her name right. <laughs> I'm a good reader. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Celeste is saying, removable paper. Removable paper. Does it come up with no damage in your experience? It's supposed to. That's the whole point of it. Um, that's what temp paper tells us, that it comes up well. I don't have a lot of experience with people having removed temp, temp wallpaper. More of my experience really falls in with paper that was like put on, like the old-fashioned way, glued down, plastered down, and there it is. But just know that whether it's paint or paper, guys, the wall has to be well prepped. If it's got a lot of bings and dings and nicks and divots, and you're applying a really thin fuss bucket paper to it, you're not going to get a good result. Ditto if you're painting a wall that is not uh, well prepped. In fact, and I'm getting off topic slightly, but when you hire a painter, the good painters, a lot of their cost is in the wall prep. It's not just the application of the paint. It's getting that, that wall well sanded, you know, getting rid of the dings, the nicks, the, the, the nail pops, all that other stuff. And I, I think that a good paper hanger slash painter, usually they have both skills, uh, you know, worth their weight in gold, especially when you're dealing with these fussy um, grass cloths. And the last thing I'll leave you, leave you with, if you think you are going with the grass cloth, I would ask your installer and or manufacturer, should this be lined? Should a, a liner paper be put down first and then the grass cloth be applied? Because some of the finer grass cloths, it is recommended that you do a liner. Oh, Steve Hoffman's passing me a question. I thought we only had two left. He was being very strict before. Uh, what about leather as wallpaper? Ah, oh, this is such a good question. This is from Twill the World in Leather. Okay, I guess you sell leather. Yeah, well, I worked on the coolest project uh, a couple of years ago. It was an old farmhouse here in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and there was an addition on the farmhouse, and it was this huge, part of the addition was this huge media room, game room, and it was a very cool, funky kind of family, you know, fun. And um, he was really into James Bond. And I said, what if we did leather on the walls? How cool would this be? Now, guys, leather, you, you ever see those hide rugs? It looks like, you know, a dead animal. Well, that's the hide, right? It, it, it has shape. It has size. It's contained. Whereas something that's vinyl, um, you know, it comes off a, a production line. Why am I telling you this? Because we were going to wallpaper just above the chair rail, above the dado, because below the chair rail was really cool um, millwork, um, raised paneling in a, in a black gloss, really cool looking. But even still, the ceilings were so high that for us to do leather, the seaming was going to be really, really difficult because of the height of the ceiling. So if you want to apply leather as a wallpaper, that's what we ran into as a problem. So we ended up going into <clears throat> a really great looking vinyl that looked like a leather, 
but this way we didn't have the constraints on the height and the seaming. So I don't know how, how to handle leather um, because of the hide height versus wall height. So if you're doing it above a chair rail, below a chair rail, you won't have that same problem. There's a lot of waste because remember when you apply a piece of wallpaper, right, you're doing these straight strips. Well, but then you're cutting off on a hide. Remember, the hide goes out here. You got that. You got that. So you're cutting off a lot. And also with leather, um, you need a really good resource that's going to be giving you hides that are all in the same dye lot so that when you're putting these hides together, you don't say, oh, wait a minute, that gray just changed. And oh, well, what happened to that brown over there? So that was also what we were starting to run up against. It was becoming so so stressful that we finally said, you know what, let's just find a really good final faux leather. So there you go. All right, so I think I uh, have everything. Oh, Twill's name is Barbara. I'm sorry, Barbara. There it is. Um, so guys, next week, accessorizing a small living room. Bring your small living room accessorization questions with you, and I will be happy to answer them. Stay healthy. Linda, so glad you're better. Everybody, stay healthy, stay well, stay healthy inside and out. We'll see you this Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern, and I will see you then, and I can't wait. All right, that's it. Bye, guys. Hi, this is Donna. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like this video, please hit the like button and comment below so I know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to the Interior Design Advocates channel so you don't miss any of our great content.